how you started playing basketball? Um, well, I started playing basketball, obviously, um, I can't like, remember when, because I was so pa ako and, um, syempre, growing up in a, ba- in a basketball house with dad, ko, si Joel Banali, who was a coach, um, then, and then also my brothers playing basketball. Gab, uh, my older brother, is currently playing basketball professionally as well. So I started playing basketball at a very young age. I can't remember. Sabi nila two years old palang daw nito basketball na ako. But it's very much ingrained in my DNA na um, pretty much my whole life I've been playing basketball. Can you share in high school and college varsity in US? Yeah. So go. Um, I played in Ateneo High School. I won back-to-back championships. Uh, my first year was a second year high school. Ako. Um, sabay kami ni Kiefer, pero first year high school siya. Um, nakuha pa lang siya sa UAE Juniors. Ateneo Blue Eagles. Uh, that was coached by ano, Coach Jamai. Coach Jamai Karim, who's, doing, who's very successful now um, in the, pro, the pros. No? Um, and... Uh, Coach Jamaik, uh, uh, kinuha kami sa team. And our first year, second year ako, naalala ko, talo kami kina David Webb, Jerry Fortuna, at sa Zobel. And then after that, the following year, uh, ang senior namin nun, si Mami Chongson, who's also in the playing for Terra Firma. Um, siya yung captain namin nun, and then we won a championship um, against FE had Mike Tolomia, Russell Espoto, big names then. And then the following year, my senior year, fourth year high school, we won a championship again, so back to back um, against Sina Dwayne Capacho, Arnold Van Opstal, Sobel Lillen. And then, ayun, uh, uh, we were playing against really good uh, players that year. Terrence Romeo played for FU. Um, Kevin Ferrer, uh, playing for USD. So, uh, very memorable sa akin yun, um, being coached by Coach Jamaik, one of the biggest influences in my life. And also, winning back-to-back championships for Ateneo and for, um, uh, for, 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 for Coach Jamaik. And then, after that, I graduated, but I didn't um, study for a year. Because Coach Eric Altamirano was the head coach of the National Youth Team, under 18 team then. So, kinuha niya ako, tsaka si Troy Rosario, and Russell Escoto um, to be part of the under 18 National Youth Team. So, at that time, marami nag-recruit sa akin, pero hindi pa akong makadeside kung saan pupunta. So, I took a year of school, um, um, and then, next to on school, but then I was focusing on the national team. We ended up placing fifth in FIBA, FIBA Asia. Um, a lot of household names then. Uh, uh, Jerome Tank, Kiefer Abena, Mike Tolomeo, Bon Pesumal. was also my teammate in high school with Kiefer. Um, and uh, after that, um, I trained in the States for six months. I coached Ed Schilling in Indiana. And then an opportunity came up where uh, a scholarship was offered by a school in the States. So, uh, ako parang, I took it as an opportunity, um, a road less traveled by, that there might be something there. So, I decided not to go to um, college here. Um, uh, I played in the States. And there, I played for Victory College and Hope International University, which was the Chris Rosales in the school. Niya. Um, Chris Russell is also in the PBA now. Um, so I played there four years. Um, I learned a lot. I learned a lot actually playing um, from high school because I was more okay under the coach Mike and then coach Eric Altamirano. My role was just uh, dead shot the shooter. So that was my role. When I played in the States, I was able to hold my dribble drive and my guard skills. That helped me transform my game into a more combo guard um, oriented player um, so I feel like it really helped me really be more um, versatile with my game um, 
and then yun so after 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 college pumalik na ako dito sa Philippines How's the feeling drafted in the PBA? Uh, I was drafted number one in the regular draft, so it was it was a weird. It was a at first when they were starting to announce how different the draft was going to be. There was going to be a Kila's draft, which essentially said that first round, you know? and then uh, there was going to be a regular draft. Um, my dad, we're, uh, our family is a devout Christian, so. Um, a, a big part of our um, lives are it is our faith in Jesus Christ. So, um, parang before before even going to college in the states, he was saying that I feel like you're gonna be the number one draft pick. So at then I didn't believe it because parang okay, I felt like um, coming out uh, of high school and college, parang I felt like um, I was I still had a lot of uh, room to. Um, and then somehow, some way, my dad and I just laughed about it. Because we had a special Gilas draft and then regular draft. So that's a regular draft. Naging number one nga talaga. So parang, I know that essentially it's a second round pick, but um, we were just laughing and we're grateful that we, I, I still had that experience of um, sort of being called the number one draft pick. And I was, uh, I'm grateful um, to God that somehow that was all possible. Um, so yeah, it was a very surreal feeling during the draft. Um, um, uh, my family was there, everyone was there, and uh, it, 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 I will never forget that. How's experience playing in Blackwater? Playing in Blackwater, so I played three three years uh, with Blackwater. Um, uh, I didn't play for any other team in PBA 5 on 5. Um, so, uh, I, I I got dra- I got drafted high and I met a lot of uh, good coaches and I played with a lot of great players um, and I'm super thankful that um, Blackwater I was part of the Blackwater family and was Celdo, who eventually my brother played for as well um, and Sir Siliman and it's a it's a very great organization I felt like everyone was family. Um, Sometimes we go to Post Joselto's house and we have to spend the uh, mga Christmas party kami dun sa bahay nila. And I felt like everyone, even the coaching staff and the, the yung mga utility, yung mga boys, um, I felt like I all, all had a good relationship with them. Um, even to yung mga licensed officers, at that time, um, and syempre, I felt like um, it was happening because I spent my whole three years in the PBA. Um, uh, I felt like also playing with them. I felt like uh, I wasn't able to maximize. I wasn't, you know, able to maximize what I can really um, do. Um, syempre, uh, three years is a very uh, a, a PBA career is a very short career. Um, at the same time, three years is a very uh, short time. You know? So I felt like um, I still had a lot to give for Blackwater or for for PBA. Um, but in everything, I felt like it was all part of the experience, and um, I'm super, super thankful um, for, for all the coaches and all the players that I, I worked with and I played with. So it was fun. It was fun. Who was teammate you learned the most in Blackwater? Since during my time, Blackwater was very fluid in terms of the roster. I was there for three years, um, and. Dami, dami ko naging teammates and dami, dami ko naging uh, like like build na relationships. Um, but uh, uh, and dami, parang uh, the the one that I felt like I was closest with was uh, is and still now I have a maintained relationship with it's Mike, Mike De Gregorio. But then also I had teammates like Mike Cortez, who's a legend. Elaine Maliksi, the superstar, Ray Parks, Boy Era, and then yung mga OGs, uh, Denok Miranda, Roger Buenafe, um, uh, Bambang Gamalinda, sila talaga, yung Jake Sena, Marcus, um, and uh, Pinto, Narts, 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 Narts diba? um, and Roy Suma. Lahat yun naging ano, quite close to at one point. Um, um, especially yung mga under na sa akin, sina Paul Cenario, sina Diego Dario. Um, I felt like I 
had that great relationship with them. But the teammate that I really learned the most was an import, was an import, si Henry Walker. Um, at that time, we, siyempre, Blackwater uh, was always at the bottom of the league. But during our time with uh, Henry Walker, we would always qualify uh, for the quarters. And then there was a there was this one time now we really had a good chance of um, knocking out Meralco uh, to enter the semis, which probably would be the the highest finish that we could ever uh, place. And it was all because of Henry Walker. He was a great, Shempre, he's an NBA legend, um, uh, sorry, NBA player and an import legend here in the Philippines. But also at the same time, he would motivate us in a way that everyone would really buy into what we're trying to do. Um, there's a lot of discouraging moments because we always place last and we're working so hard yet we're not winning. Yet somehow, Henry was able to turn that around and to always motivate us and, and, and uh, sort of like give us that winning mentality. That a lot of the things that he was saying at that time, I still it's still in my mind right now, and I use it on an everyday basis. So I'm, I'm really thankful for uh, Henry. And at that time, we were known as the hard to kill team, because nga parang yung malabat talaga kami, uh, despite uh, uh, despite our roster. So I'll never forget that, uh, uh, along with all the teammates that I played with and the coaches also. As well. How's experience playing PBA three x three? out of nowhere. I've been playing PBA 3 for two years now, post-pandemic. Uh, I, I, uh, towards the end of my uh, time with Blackwater, I sustained an ACL injury. And yun yung bago, bago mag-pandemic. So, uh, right before the pandemic, na injure ako ACL. And then, nag-stop yung lahat ng all medical facilities. Um, only to cater to um, COVID patients and the pandemic. So, I got injured and I wasn't able to do rehab and di ako na pagpa-surgery kay Dokan na straight away because of the pandemic. So, talagang na, na, natigil ako uh, during the pandemic. And so, after everything was starting to pick back up, um, I, I had my surgery done with Dokan na and everything was well. But I was, I was expecting to still play 5 on 5 And so, as I'm just preparing for whatever's next. Um, I was working out this, in this gym, SM Light, uh, Activate Sports by Bostex Sia, really great facility. And then nakita ko that si Coach Anton Aldamerano and the Platinum PBA 3 XG team, um, who were also some of my teammates before, Matt Salem, Uten and Rata, they were practicing. So they invited me na, oh, how do you want to go back? How do you want to go while you're rehabbing for your injury? And then, so I, I, I grabbed it as an opportunity na to, to get in shape. And I know naman Anton, Coach Anton from way back. Um, and then, I really love the feeling of 3x3 because for not having so many so much minutes during in my 5 and 5 state, all of a sudden in 3x3, your usage is really high. Kasi tatlo lang kayo eh. So, halos lahat ng play involved ka, tapos wala pang sub. So, parang na-miss ko yung feeling na yun after, di ba, parang na-bench ako eh. So, parang na, na-enjoy ko yung feeling ulit na maglaro. I found that in PSV. So, I really, I really found a new kind of joy in playing basketball when I played PBA games. Granted that it was really, it's a really totally different sport, kind of. Um, because the load is so high, sobrang nakakapagod siya. Pero at the same time, masarap siya maglaro mag, mag, masarap maglaro sa PSV because um, it's just like backyard basketball systematic backyard basketball where in every player involved and you get to really 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 play basketball at its best form so um, so far uh, our season is ending now uh, almost we have grand finals next um, but so far in the two years that I've played PSV I've loved every second of it um, I'm so grateful for Coach Adon Altemirano and Coach Eric Altemirano for giving me a, a, a chance to continue to play um, at the pro level because even though it's very much a PBA material and PBA level yet, so it's still professional so I still get to play at the very high level and, and, and I'm loving every minute of it. How's teammate Brandon Ramirez? Brandon is, 
MMM uh, I've played against Brandon in 3XT when he was still part of Chooks. Um, and it's the I already saw what I think everyone is thinking. Like he's a really big guy, a handy 6'5", 60 to 70 pounds. Um, nung before parang ko oh, sino to parang nalaki nito ah. And then I started playing against him, and he's not a big. He's uh he's a guard in a wing. He has guard skills, and he moves like a wing. So um, I instantly saw great um, ceiling for him uh, then at, at an early uh, at an early stage. And then now we have an opportunity. I have an opportunity to play with him alongside him, and he's he's entering the draft next to PBA, and I honestly think it's gonna be a top pick. Um, if not top three, uh, if not top pick, top three, um, because um, not only does he have he has the body of Ali Pink. Um, but then he moves like a wing. He moves like a wing. He can dribble. He can uh, uh, he can uh, post you up. He can pick and roll. He can be the ball handler in the pick and roll situation. But he can also be the screener in the pick and roll situation. And he can shoot from outside as well. So he he's gonna be a re- whoever drafts him. He's it's certainly gonna help that he because he can play multiple positions. At the same time, he can guard multiple positions. At the same time, he can score on three levels: so inside, mid range, and outside. So, um, my experience playing with him, uh, it it makes my job as a point guard, as a as a as a sort of like a, a guy who loves to create easier. Because Brandon can finish, Brandon can set really good screens, Brandon can play any position that you want him to. And he has a good attitude, he's a good character guy, he's a good locker room guy as well. So, wala siyang attitude, talagang uh, wala akong masasabi kay Brandon. And I'm very excited to see how his uh, PBA career will unfold because he can really make an impact right away. Um, if if the teams and the coaches use him well, because ang ang fear ko lang all sa kanya is going some big man lang eh, na dahil siya pre six five and malaki niya pagalagay lang siya sa ilalim, but he can do so much more. He can do so much more, and as you can see, our, a lot of our successes in in three x three is because um, we have Brandon, and so um, I'm very excited for him to make an immediate impact uh, in the team. Yeah. Top three toughest opponent players in PBA three x three. Top three toughest three opponent. At number one, I would say um, I would say Ken Bono. <laughs> Ken Bono. Um, in three x three, but obviously we know him. The Barang legend, cha MVP, stellar college career, and Croatia. Um, so he has that under his uh, bag na meron siyang ability to really become a really good player. Lalo na lala in terms of his experiences of the charts. Pero si Ken Bono kasi pag nakuha niya yung bola, parang there's, especially a guy like me, 6'1", 190, there's only so much I can do. But it's not only him, lahat talaga nahirapan sa kanya. So um, he's really tough to, to deal with. Um, especially pag nakapahinga siya, pag fresh na fresh siya, um, Ken Bono can easily give you uh, 8 to 10 points in a single PXP. Uh, I would say Ken Bono would be number one. Number two would be uh, obviously Anon Pusodros because he can, um, I think 3x3 was made for him um, because then this is Alabas and PX3 is a, even though he's, he, he's not that tall of a player, but his uh, deadliness in his shooting ability makes him a really hard player to guard. Um, at the same time, you know, IQ is off the charts. So, I was also the shooting number three. I would say, um, toughest player to guard, toughest opponent. For uh, actually, for me, eh, madami, madami you can fill in that third spot. But for me, yung dalawang talaga is um, Ken Bono and Alan Pasolus.
If you not became professional basketball player, why do you think your work right now? That's a really good question because a lot of basketball players really devote their whole being to becoming uh, passionate basketball players. So, uh, if you asked me this ten years ago, five years ago, wala akong masasagot. But now that I'm, uh, siguro three x three, siguro I'm in the latter part of my career na. Chevre, I, I have a family, I have to find ways to you know, be able to um, create a life after basketball. So I'll answer na lang na what do you think basketball is right now? What, what do you think I'll become? Um, right now, I um, I opened, uh, I started, it's a start, I started a boutique marketing agency. So I feel like um, Kobe Bryant is one of my inspirations in, 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 in Kobe. Um, sinabi niya na to, niya to and I can resonate well with him. Si Kobe, sabi niya, he's a storyteller. And I feel like I'm also a storyteller. I love you know, great movies, great stories, um, well-written stuff um, that really uh, portray a beautiful narrative. Um, so for me, marketing is all, all about storytelling and how you tell your story as a brand, as a person, as a business, as a company. And so, um, I found my passion, my new passion in storytelling through helping brands, companies, and um, businesses tell their own story. So, um, like, ngayon, Paul, you're, you're asking me my story. So, I'm sort of like being like Paul through all, uh, different brands that I'm currently working with into creatively telling their own story. So, uh, again, I, 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 I admire what you do, Paul, right? Now, no, I admire it and I fully support it and uh, it's great what you're doing here and I'm here for it. Uh, but yeah, going back, uh, so I think I would be uh, a creative marketer uh, if basketball ended right now. That's, that's what I mean. Last question, top three NBA players in East right now. Top three NBA players in the East right now. I'll answer this poll, ano no, sasagutin ko to na parang general, like talaga no question, uh, player, best player. Pero maglalagay din ako ng bias na favorite ko, di ba? Na not necessarily top. So number one, I would say Joel Embiid. Uh, sobrang dominant niya. I would even go far as to say um, he could, if he wins a couple of championships, he could contest um, Shaq as the most dominant player. Diba? Even I would even put him above Yanis. Si Yanis na nga isang championship na. Miss Embiid wala pa. But pag, pag ma, the way he's playing right now, if it brings um, a couple of championships to Philly, I could uh, argue that Joel Embiid might be more dominant than Shaq. Um, toe-to-toe na big. Uh, so number one, Joel Embiid. Number two, I would say, uh, ito yung favorite. Gusto gusto kong player ngayon. Si... Um, Si Tyrese Hall- Halliburton. Um, I love, I really love his game. Uh, gusto ko yung mga players na not that aesthetic, not that fast, but very crafty, very skilled. Um, I resonate with that as well. So I really like his style of play. He can, you know, he doesn't necessarily have to score, um, but he can score. He can um, set his teammates up and he translates wins. So that's my type of player. Um, and then lastly, siguro, I would say, um, I would say in the East, I would still put Giannis there. I would put Gian- Giannis at number three. I, parang, I would put Jason Tatum at number four, but Giannis number three for me, just because whenever you have Giannis, may na, no, meron pa silang little bit. Um, it's really a title to that uh, I hope Jason Tatum is very good, he's very talented, I hope he gets to that level one day, which I'm sure he would. But so far, my top three is me, Halliburton, and uh, Yanis. Paul, well, thank you so much. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, support me and I admire you. I admire you. Thank you, thank you so much. God bless. God bless. Thank you for watching.